Hi everybody, I am Vet Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the difference between arterial and venous ulcers. So let's get into it. So starting with arterial, they develop due to damage to the arteries. That makes sense, right? This causes a lack of blood flow to the tissues. So some sort of damage to the arteries occurs, then there's not enough blood, which means there's not enough oxygen going to the area. Risk factors include smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, trauma, like getting a broken bone, atherosclerosis, which is the thickening of the arteries, and then having a blocked artery. On the flip side of that are venous ulcers. So these occur in the veins. Damage to the veins caused by insufficient return of blood back to the heart. Risk factors for a venous ulcer include varicose veins. So those are those large, torturous veins that we usually get in our lower extremities. Obesity, having a clotting disorder, pregnancy, and having a DVT, a deep vein thrombosis, so a blood clot in your lower extremity. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms and the treatments. Now let's compare the signs and symptoms. You're going to notice that they're very different from one another, but that's a good thing because that's gonna help you remember it better. So let's start with arterial, and where are these located? They're usually located on the outside of the ankle, the feet, the heels, and the toes. Some signs and symptoms, they will appear tight. There will be no active bleeding or discharge. If you were to touch them, it'll feel cool to the touch. These are gonna be like perfect, smooth, round sores, like perfect little circles. The skin in that area will be hairless due to lack of blood flow. There will be no edema, so no swelling in the area, no discharge, no drainage. These are usually very deep wounds. And when you go to do the pulses on your patient, they'll either be weak, thready, or you won't be able to find them at all. And something kind of special with the arterial ulcers, when dependent, they appear quite red. The skin in the area appears quite red. But when we elevate, it becomes very pale. So treatment for this kind of ulcer includes antibiotics because we want to prevent infection, of course. Other things we can do would be an angioplasty. Now that's something the doctor is going to do. We're not going to do that, but we can help with it. So this is a surgical procedure that's going to help with blood flow in the area. And then worst case scenario, extreme scenario, is they're going to have to amputate. Now let's compare that to venous ulcers. So these are usually located on the inside of the ankle. Some signs and symptoms include inflammation, edema, scabbing, itching. These borders are going to be irregular. They're not going to be these perfect circles like in the arterial ones. There will be some sort of discharge drainage, maybe even active bleeding in that area. These are going to be much more shallow and we'll have no problem finding a pulse. We should have no issues finding a pulse on these patients. The treatment for this will of course include antibiotics because we don't want the patient to get an infection. Compression stockings and elevating the legs. So this could either be like SCDs or even like a TED hose, something like that. The purpose of these two things is to help with the blood flow. It's to help increase blood flow to the area. Pain medications, because this one is more painful, this one, they usually don't report too much pain. But with venous ulcers, they do. So we could give pain meds if they're having pain in that area. And then proper bandaging, teaching them wound care and how to take care of their wounds. Venous ulcers, depending on how big they are, can take months to heal. Arterial ulcers, they can also take months to heal. But in extreme cases, they'll never heal. And then that's when we have to do things like the amputation. And you'll note here, I underlined some of these signs and symptoms. You see how they're opposite? So this is like no swelling, no discharge, perfect circles, very deep. 
And this one is the opposite, right? So there's swelling, there's discharge, it's irregular, it's shallow. So kind of comparing the two and seeing how they're almost opposites is really going to help you uh, differentiate them and tell them apart. So that was my video on arterial versus venous ulcers. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.